What is going on everybody and welcome back to Gary's Mod Game Mode Scripting. Today in part 2 we are going to be adding the three required files we need which include the clinit.lua, the init.lua, and the shared.lua files. As well as that we are going to go into the game and actually show off some of the stuff that we did in the in first part as well as in today's part. So let's begin. We're going to need to create three Lua files. And you can either do this by going into your favorite text editor, uh, typing out the code, and then saving it as a .lua. But I'm going to do it this way, just create a new text document. And going to call this the CL underscore init. And then change the .txt to .lua. And accept. And I'm actually just going to copy this and paste it two times and rename this one to init.lua and rename this to shared.lua and what these three files do is first of all the cl underscore init.lua file this file is called whenever a player connects to the server whenever a client connects this init.lua is server side so this is launched whenever the server is started up the shared.lua file is just shared between them basically and just initializes a bunch of stuff that we need in order for, for our game mode to function in some places. So let's begin with the CL init file. We're just going to fill this up. Let me move this over to this monitor. And what we are going to want in here is we're going to want to include the shared.lua file. And what this include shared.lua does, or what this include statement does, is that it's going to execute a Lua script in the current file, basically. So this will allow us to use stuff from shared.lua in the cl underscore init file. And that is all that we're going to need in the cl init file for now. We'll be adding more stuff to that later on. So let's move on to our init.lua file. Let me open that up. And we're going to need to add or include some stuff here as well and we're also going to get introduced to a new thing called add cs lua file and we're going to want to add the cl underscore init dot lua and what this add cs lua file does before i go on any farther is that it's going to include a client side lua file that will be downloaded by the client when they connect to the server so when a player or when a client connects to the server, the CL init file will be downloaded for it to be able to be used. And besides that CL init, we are going to want to include the shared.lua. Oops. The shared.lua. And then we're going to want to include the shared.lua. And that's the basic structure of that. And we're going to add some more code into this in just one second. I just want to get this last file set up, the shared.lua file. So let's create that. Move it over there. And what we're going to need in here is gm.name. And set that equal to whatever the name of your plugin is. In this case, I'm just going to call it game mode since that's the file name for this game mode that I am working on. Next, we're going to need gm.author equals erogetic. Go ahead and put in your name or your username, whichever one you prefer. And then gm.email equals n-a. You don't got to fill that one out. And then gm.website equals n-a. And you don't got to fill that one out. So just like that, the name and the author, you want to put those in there. The email and website are, if you have one, go ahead and put it in there. Otherwise, it does not matter. And we want to derive game mode sandbox. And what this derive game mode sandbox does is that it's going to, or it's going to retrieve data from the sandbox game mode and allow us to use it in our game mode, basically. And after this derive ga game mode, we want to get a function gm colon initialize and end it and this is going to be called whenever the server is initialized or whenever the game mode starts up and we're just going to throw in it we're just going to throw in a comment saying do stuff here 
Next, we can go back to our init.lua init file, and I can show you one more thing, which is the gm player spawn function. And what we're going to do in this one is we're just going to set the player's loadout. So once they join the game or when they spawn and or die and respawn, this is what they're going to start with. So if we want to set their gravity, we can do apply set gravity. This PLY variable is automatically passed in, and we can set the gravity for that player. And let's just set it to 0.8. And next we can set the max health for the player by doing the PLY colon and set max health and set that to 100 and then we can do apply set run speed and let's set it to something high, 500 and the player walk speed and then we can give them weapons to start out with so let's say, let's give them the fizz cannon or the gravity gun and we can give them how about we give them the fizz gun weapon underscore fizz gun and there's that and another thing that we can do is if we wanted this to just happen once the player joins the server instead of every time they respawn you can use something called function gm player initial spawn just like this and then just fill this up with whatever you want I'm not going to be using this, but it's good to know that that's a function that can be used. So again, this one will only do it once they join the server, whereas this one will do it every time they respawn. So right there, that is basically it for the basic file structure and everything that we need in order to get this game mode actually running. So let's go into Gary's mod here. And in this bottom right here, click that and load in game mode. And as you can see, this logo that we created in the last part is now showing up there and if I click this you can see that our logo that we created as well is there as well which is just that yellow orangish box so let's start up a game GM construct start game and now that we're loaded up if I were to scroll through my weapons you can see that we've got the gravity gun and the physics gun only and that is because when the player spawned we gave them that weapon which basically gets rid of everything else except the two things that I gave them and if I were to walk there's my walk speed my run speed gravity is all set it's kind of hard to see because it's not too much different than the default but that stuff is working and also one more thing that I want to add to this is if you notice in the bottom there there's no hands a way that we can do this is we can use the function set up hands just like this and now if I were to reload this you just type in reload in the console and now what should happen is that we should be able to see our hand yep there it is got our hand on the gravity gun and so that is all set up that is the basic file structure that we need and the basic setup that we need in order to get our game mode up and running so next episode we can actually start doing some more interesting things. So hopefully you learned something today, and I hope to see you next time in part three. Thank you.